in psychology, the term codependence means that there is a relationship uh, with uh, symbiotic characteristics between these two sides of the uh, equation. On the one hand, we have the person who is creating the codependency, which is normally a narcissist or a psychopath, and also or a borderline, and also the the other side of the uh, of the equation, the, uh, it's the victim or the person that is has been harassed, humiliated for this uh, narcissist uh, uh, subject. So codependency creates a situation where one person is uh, trying to take over the second person, the victim, and the victim is adapting himself, herself, in order to survive in this relationship. So codependency creates a person who is accepts a level of dependency and inferiority uh, towards the main subject of this relationship of codependency, who is the abuser. So considering these elements, I'm going to bring some um, fragments uh, that I got from two from three different papers on the internet and I think they're pretty accurate they're pretty uh, interesting and necessary to uh, work with uh, for to clarify this concept this concept is very important because it creates dependency and this dependency of the codependent basically is dependency to authority so this codependent person will be willing to accept humiliations, abuse from authority, an authority figure because has been socialized in a feeling in a, a mind frame that accepts and validates that fact. Dysfunctional families do not acknowledge that problem exists. They don't talk about them or confront them. As a result, family members learn to repress emotions and disregard their own needs. They become survivors. They develop behaviors that help them deny, ignore, or avoid difficult emotions. They detach themselves. They don't talk. They don't touch. They don't confront. They don't feel. They don't trust. The identity and emotional development of the members of a dysfunctional family are often inhibited. The war we were born into, the battlefield each of us grew up in, was not in some foreign country against some identified enemy. It was in the homes which were supposed to be our safe heaven with our parents whom we loved and trusted to take care of us. It was not for a year or two or three. It was for 16 or 17 or 18 years. Instead of blood and death, although some do experience blood and death literally, what happened to us as children was a spiritual death, an emotional maiming, mental torture, and physical violation. In a war, soldiers have to deny what it feels like to see friends killed and maimed, what it feels like to kill other human beings and have them attempting to kill you. There is trauma caused by the events themselves. There is trauma due to the necessity of, the, of denying the emotional impact of those events. There is trauma from the effects the emotional denial has on the person's life after he, she has returned from the war because as long as the person denying his or her emotional trauma, she, he is denying a part of himself or herself. The stress caused by the trauma and the effect of denying the trauma by denying self eventually surfaces in ways which produce new trauma, anxiety, alcohol and drug abuse, nightmares, uncontrollable rage, inability to maintain relationships, inability to hold jobs, suicide, etc. Instead of blood and death, although some do experience blood and death literally, 
What happened to us as children was spiritual death and emotional maiming, mental torture and physical violation. We were forced to grow up denying the reality of what was happening in our homes. We were forced to deny our feelings about what we were experiencing and seeing and sensing. We were forced to deny ourselves. We grew up having to deny the emotional reality of parental alcoholism, addiction, mental illness, rage, violence, depression, abandonment, betrayal, deprivation, neglect, incest, etc., etc. We were born into the middle of a war where our sense of self was battered and fractured and broken into pieces. We grew up in the middle of a battlefield where our beings were discounted, our perceptions invalidated, and our feelings ignored and nullified. Codependency is being at war with ourselves, which makes it impossible to trust and love ourselves. Codependence is denying part of ourselves so that we do not know who we are. We experience what is called sanctuary trauma, our safest place to be was not safe, and we experienced it on a daily basis for years and years. Some of the greatest damage was done to us in subtle ways on a daily basis because our sanctuary was a battlefield. It was not a battlefield because our parents were wrong or bad. It was a battlefield because they were at war within, because they were born into the middle of a war. By doing our healing, we are becoming the emotionally honest role models that our parents never had the chance to be. Through being in recovery, we are helping to break the cycles of self-destructive behavior that have dictated human existence for thousands of years. Codependence is a very vicious and powerful form of delayed straight syndrome. The trauma of feeling like we were not safe in our own homes make it very difficult to feel like we are safe anymore. Feeling like we were not lovable to our own parents make it very difficult to believe that anyone can love us. It's very important to uh, be aware of codependency for the process of recovery uh, after uh, living in a life with narcissistic people. Narcissists want to make you believe that you are faulty, uh, make you feel um, ashamed of yourself, uh, make you feel guilt for everything you do, sinful. So basically, uh, codependency is kind of the door in order then to get um, a person like submissive and not developing their true self. So the true, true self has been um, uh, obliterated, uh, uh, pushed down because the narcissist doesn't cannot deal with uh, the, the self. They only can deal with the ego, and the ego uh, it can be crushed down. The self is hidden inside somewhere, but because of all these uh, bad feelings that creates uh, the fact that you're yourself. Um, but the, um, the narcissist doesn't want you to be yourself. The narcissist wants to, you to be an appendix of herself or himself in order to use you and to make you feel that inferior so the um, narcissist feels better. So that's kind of the cycle. If you want to get rid of codependency, you have to look at the big picture and be brave about it, okay? And don't blame yourself because you were innocent in this battlefield. Okay, take care. Thank you.